everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather and today we're gonna make honeycomb. Now, if you have watched any of the baking shows, often people will use honeycomb in their bakes. Um, there's never actually been a challenge for people to make honeycomb, but everybody, especially in the British baking show or the British Bake Off, um, they make honeycomb to go in their bakes. And so I've always wanted to try this. And since this is the year where I'm like trying all the things that I've always been scared to try, this one landed on the list. So if you're ready for this adventure, let's get started. What you're gonna need is one cup of white sugar, 200 grams, a third of a cup of light corn syrup, 80 milliliters, one third of a cup of water, 80 milliliters, two and a half teaspoons of baking soda, and some chocolate for dipping or drizzling, or if you don't want any chocolate, that's okay too. You can skip that step. It's good regardless. Okay, some things that, that we need to go over first before we, we begin. Um, you do need a silicone spatula of some sort so that whenever you get this out and you stir it, um, you don't burn your plastic because this mixture is going to get up to 300 degrees. Speaking of 300 degrees, a good thermometer. Uh, you could use a candy thermometer if your candy thermometer goes low enough to get into the mixture. My candy thermometer has a little foot on it so that the glass itself is not on the bottom of a pan whenever you rest it in. And that is too much. Um, it has to be a much thicker liquid than what we're going to do here today. You're also going to need a prepared baking sheet or a baking pan. Um, some people like to do it in like a square tin and you just put some parchment paper in there and then you pour it in there. However, I want to make mine much thinner than that. So I have a silicone baking mat on my tray so I can just pour it on there and then it can harden like that. I also have a little silicone mold that I am going to attempt to put some of it in the silicone mold because since this is the first time that I'm making it, I don't know the best way to get my desired results because I would love to just be able to pop these out and then cover them in chocolate and then I'd have my candy like that. Because my understanding is that once it is dry um, and hard, getting it into exact chunks is very, very difficult. So I picked up this mold, it's silicone BPA free at Walmart and they have a lot of them. This is for ice cubes, but I figured it's probably gonna be excellent for candy as well because in the candy section, they have other molds, but none of them were like chocolate bars. This is, this is almost like a Twix bar size. So I thought I would try that as well. I also got the Giardelli milk chocolate melting wafers and we will melt those once this is all cooled. This will take about one hour to cool and get hard. So if you want this for um, you know, dessert for tonight or whatever, just make sure you make it at least an hour ahead of time. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on to medium-ish. And it's gonna buzz for a second, but that's okay. We're gonna add in our water, add in our sugar, all right, and we'll stir that. And then we're gonna put in our cornstarch. All right, and we're gonna give that a good stir. Now, as this heats to boiling, we're actually going to stir frequently. Once this is all mixed together, I'm just gonna leave it for about every 30 seconds. Now, the moment that this starts to boil, which this is induction, so it's not gonna take very long. I don't know if you can see, but it's already starting to boil. Just, just a little bit, those bubbles are forming. Okay, don't, don't stir it again. So now comes the time where you're gonna need a thermometer. So we're going to, let's go ahead and bring that down just a little bit to 300. Now we're gonna, we're gonna bring this up to 300 degrees. So I want to check it and we're already at 200, 218, 220. So it is not gonna take a long. Now, if you do not have an induction burner, it will take you a little bit longer to do this. Okay, make sure that you have your baking soda already measured out. And the reason is you want to pour it in all at the same time and we're gonna get this fascinating bubble. And I'm hoping to catch it on camera, 
because it is absolutely fantastic. I've seen it. It's awesome. And then we have to move very quickly once we get to there. And as much as you want to stir this, don't. Because when you agitate those uh, sugar crystals, they will start to form and they'll be like a chain reaction. Your, your mixture will go all crystally. Don't do it. Look at that. See now it's starting to chill. Right, have everything ready. Now, as I mentioned, some places say, you know, put it in something with sides so it can rest up against. I want it more of like a, a thinner version. So I chose the silicone mat. And then also I will do the silicone mold. We'll see if that's even a thing. Okay, we have hit the candy stage. So turn off your heat and then we are gonna get this ready and we are gonna pour this in. Now watch all of the bubbles happen, ready? Make sure that you stir it up really well and then we are going to immediately but don't do too much because too much stirring will knock out all the bubbles so immediately i'm going to pour some into these molds so that we can get that figured out and then the rest of it i'm going to pour onto this mat all right and i got my little scraper here so that i can go kind of scrape off the top and that'll be a something to clean later. But if it comes out like I'm hoping it will, I think it will be worth it. Okay, this is already turning into a candy, so we're just gonna leave it. So now we're going to wait for one hour. Oh, before I leave, let me tell you that the best way to clean your pan, because this is gonna be hardball, um, candy in here is to fill it full of water, get it back to a boil, and all of that sugar dissolves into the water and then cleanup is a breeze. There we go. Totally clean. Okay, it's been an hour and our honeycomb should be done. So because we did it on silicone mat, it's really easy to pick up and deal with. So I have a knife here, but apparently you can just do this. Yep, you can do that. Just be a little more gentle than maybe I did. Um, I am going to try to cut it with a knife too to see if I can get a clean cut, but this is so hard, I'm not gonna be able to. No, yeah, so this is why I wanted to do it in this because this is great, like, but this is all different, you know, candy bits, which is fine. They're just kind of different shapes. Like how do they do it in the candy stores? I mean, obviously they use a mold of some sort, but I'll show you the inside of this in just a second after we decide if this was a bad idea or really a good idea. So let's pop this up and anything that fell over, I can just cut into pieces. Hmm, so far so good, it's very sticky. Okay, moment of truth, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at that. This is, that's actually a really good idea. I feel like I should have filled them up. I'll show you just a second. When I, when I ran my um, scraper over the top, I think I um, popped some of the bubbles, which is fine for this first time. But if I do this again and actually make it into something that I wanna share, um, don't do that. Just leave them, well, no, you still wanna do that. Hmm, I don't know, but let me show you. Look at that. See that? That's pretty cool. And that would be very easy to dunk in something. I feel like if they were smaller, it'd be more ideal, but this end one didn't really get much of it. But these, these ones look amazing. Okay, let's get a close camera real quick and I'll show you the insides. So the reason they call it honeycomb is that it has all of those bubbles in it that create kind of like a honeycomb texture. So here, the bottom of those bars, you can see that texture in there. And here's the top of those bars. Isn't that cool? 
Um, but let's cut, I'm gonna cut into one of these bars. Oh yeah, that worked splendidly. Mmm, mmm, that is so good. See the inside of those bars? All those nice bubbles. It's so caramely, it's so good. I do feel I didn't get as many bubbles as most people get, like who've made it a lot, but that's just probably because either I stirred too much, which they say don't stir too much, or at the end there, I think it's just I, did, I stirred too much. So maybe don't stir as much, but this stuff looks fantastic. Mm, and it tastes fantastic too. That's good. It's like candy caramel, but it does have that marshmallowy taste, but not texture. Very crunchy. Okay, before I eat this all, do I wanna try to dip it in chocolate? I kind of don't because these are so good, plain. No, let's do it. All right, so I have a glass baking dish and I am going to simply melt these. So we are going to put all of the chocolate in that dish and read the directions. It says 30 seconds, stir 15, 15, 15 until melted, that's easy. In the meantime, let's decide how big of pieces, I think I'm gonna, break the big ones a little bit smaller. Sometimes they're difficult, so that's where you probably wanna use the knife. There, oh yeah, huh. Okay, let's see if I can, oh yeah, just keep your, keep your hand out of the way. All right, after just one minute, our chocolate is ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take our little bars here and I'm just going to dip them carefully in chocolate, shake it off, and then try to do, you're just gonna get dirty. That's all there is to it. And then we're just gonna set it down. I feel like I need a chocolate pastry brush to brush it on the edges. Oh, I like that idea much better. Now, what do we do with these? I don't know. I think I'm just going to dip them and set them down. I read somewhere else that you could drizzle them with chocolate, but that's a lot of chocolate for just drizzling. And hear me out here. I feel like before you break it up, you should dip it in chocolate. Cause you can melt this chocolate, put it on parchment paper and then paint it over the top or dip it in. And then, you know what I'm saying? And then break it up. I wanna say homemade tastes, even though I don't have as many bubbles, tastes way better than store-bought. Um, maybe because it's so fresh, but it's light, but yet crispy. And there's, I don't wanna say chewy because it's definitely not chewy, it is crispy, but there's a fluffy kind of, because those air bubbles are in there, as you bite through it, you have this crunch that is unmatched. The bars are already hard. And other than my um, janky sides, um, they look really professional. Let's bite into this one that has the, t the hard chocolate. You guys, that's freaking amazing. I can tell that it would be just that much better if it had had all of the air bubbles in there. But for my first try at honeycomb, not bad, not bad at all. All right, you guys. Did you enjoy that video? If you did, give it a like, share it with your friends, and have you ever made honeycomb before? And will you, after you saw how generally easy that was? Don't stir so much. I was a little stir happy. Don't stir that much. And um, yeah, if you wanna see me adventure with anything that you're just not quite willing to adventure with yet, let me know in the comments. I take all of my comments into consideration before I plan my next video. So that's it for me. We'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.